What is the essence of all advice? Yes, 24 hours being engaged in Krishna consciousness and uh, two faculties are mentioned. Two uh, things that need to be engaged in Krishna consciousness. The mind and the tongue. Yes. So both are the um, instruments for tasting. We taste with the tongue and we taste with the mind. So this is important. When we <coughs> We can, we can, of course, also in Krishna consciousness, everything is uh, employed in tasting. The ears can taste. Um, yesterday was such a nice kirtan, and you hear some, like, Uta uh, Prabhu is singing uh, in kirtan. We can taste with the ears. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, at the same time, uh, we can taste with our tongue when we chant or sing the sweet names of Krishna. Sometimes it may even happen that even our japa can be very tasty and we have uh, a great taste. Uh, repeat Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. At the same time, Rupa Kosani mentions both things because we can engage sometimes just one part, only, only the tongue, and we can chant, whereas the mind is somewhere else and you feel no taste. So this is, in fact, a secret 
how to achieve taste. It, it is to engage both the uh, external senses and the internal senses, both the uh, tongue and the mind. So the tongue uh, chants Hare Krishna and the mind thinks about Krishna. Ideally, at the perfection stage, we chant Hare Krishna and we think Hare Krishna. We chant Krishna Krishna and we think Krishna Krishna at the same time. Yeah, that's the idea. <clears throat> uh, at the same time, it may take some time before we, we reach that stage and it may be <clears throat> that uh, sometimes we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And in the mind we think that uh, Krishna is beautiful, or Krishna is my savior, Krishna is uh, the freedom from material world, or Krishna is uh, the lover of the gopis. We think something of <coughs> Krishna, which is uh, not yet the perfection of chanting, but it at least occupies our mind uh, in the direction of Krishna. You have the whole book by Mahani Dissani, The Art of Chanting, uh, where he gives a lot of these techniques to help us at least um, <coughs> occupy the mind in Krishna and not in our shopping list, in our to-do list, in our schedule and um, other things that, you know, that we are engaged oftentimes in our mind. So when we think about Krishna there is a chance that you know, we may hear sometimes what we are chanting. <laughs> Three things are mentioned about uh, this practice. So one thing is uh, anusmritya, remembering, and remembering the name, the form, the pastimes, and so on. So this is, and we engage the tongue and the mind. And the second thing is tishtam braja. It's in in braja. In Vrindavan. So Krishna can be worshipped only in Vrindavan. So this is the mystic part of our practice that we uh, enter the sacred space of Vrindavan to worship Krishna. And we recreate this sacred space in our heart, and uh, Krishna is worshipped only in Vrindavan. You have to enter Vrindavan to worship Krishna. Some mystics, they try to worship uh, the Lord in the heart, uh, they worship the Lord in, in everywhere, they worship the Lord in Vaikuntha, but uh, Vaishnavas, practicing meditation, uh, establish, they, they try to enter Vrindavan with the body, if not with the mind, and uh, we have to go both with the body and if we are going to Vrindavan with the body we should also take the mind there. Because like once one devotee asks Shiva Prabhupada, Shiva Prabhupada, is it true that Goloka Vrindavan and Gokula Vrindavan are non different? So Prabhupada said, that is true, but your mind is in New York. <laughs> <laughs> it's neither in Goloka Vrindavan or Gokula Vrindavan. It's in New York. <laughs> yeah. When the peacocks are crying so different people hear different things in Vrindavan. I remember when I first came to Vrindavan in 1999 and I was sleeping and in the middle of the night I wake up and I hear Go! 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 And I was, I couldn't understand, what is this? Is this a recording? Is it a tape? <laughs> or is it the real peacock in real Vrindavan? And then I realized, wow, it's in Vrindavan and this is a peacock. Of course, nowadays in that place you don't find peacocks anymore. <laughs> Because everything is covered with cement and buildings around. <clears throat> mm. uh, but still, where I live, you, can, you still have peacocks. He comes uh, every evening. When he is hungry, he takes uh, bread from me. <laughs> and uh, he lives on a, a big, big tree about my, uh, about my room. <clears throat> and in the morning, he offloads uh, you know, his yesterday's meal down there. <laughs> but they are nice. They're nice. <laughs> and some, in, in the evening, in the morning, they, they, they cry. So different people hear different things, you know. Uh, s some, uh, like an, a, an educated Indian will hear 
Meg all, meg all. You know, meg all, meaning uh, yeah. cloud, cloud come, cloud come. You know, because when it's hot, you want to see the clouds. Today it was 41 in Vrindavan. <coughs> and uh, it's getting hot. And uh, <laughs> so that's, that's the normal thing. Then a, a devotee, he will hear, Kiko, Kiko, Kiko. Who is the most uh, beautiful and who is the most attractive in Vrindavan? The answer is implied that Radharani is the most, Krishna is the most uh, beautiful, but Radharani attracts even Krishna. He attracts him. That's uh, uh, yes. But uh, at the same time, you have a class of people there who, when the peacocks cry, they will hear, New York! New York! <laughs> New York! <laughs> it's like a, So it's not enough to get our body to bring down. Even though it, it's quite good, we have to get also our uh, mind to bring down. The mind is very special. But when we are outside of Rindavan, we can bring our mind to Rindavan. We can think about Rindavan. And when we worship, we have to somehow recreate Rindavan in our heart. And part of Vrindavan is what we described here. This is the Vrindavan vision. When we, when we see this spiritual servant in everybody, when we see uh, every devotee as a devotee, <coughs> this is part of Vrindavan vision. And we don't look at the, <coughs> at the defects, but we look at, at what is devotional in everybody. And that's a very inspiring vision. When we are in such a uh, place, then uh, we blossom. We blossom and the original series uh, blossoms, it flourishes. <coughs> this is part of Vrindavan vision. We, so we create Vrindavan throughout the day, also by how we see and interact with others. And uh, the other part is we actually, uh, you can see in most meditations, for most mantras, there is a meditation, and, and uh, <coughs> for our practice, <coughs> Govinda, Govindaji is the deity, and the meditation is. Uh, on a jeweled simhasana, a jeweled throne. Shimadradha Shiva Govinda Deva, Reshtari Yusariya Mana Sarami, and the Sarat surrounded by the beautiful goddess. So we create the place in our mind. We try to enter the place in our mind. It, it can be a very sophisticated meditation. And then, Tal Anuragi Janamagami, the third resident, uh, this, sorry, the, set, the third com component is following in the footsteps of a, of a resident of Rindal. So in these, we engage our mind all the time. So we engage ourselves in external service. We engage our body in service, and then we engage, engage our mind in service, and uh, <clears throat> we think about Vrindavan, we, we live in Vrindavan, we try to live in Vrindavan, and uh, we follow a <coughs> beloved devotee of Krishna, some devotee who uh, is very dear to Krishna. But Raman Goswami, the first commentator on Shri Upadeshamita says that this can be practiced in two ways, in Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. And frankly, this begins the practice of Raganuga. So this, this verse starts describing the Raganuga Bhakti where we, this part about following a beloved devotee of Krishna, it means following some specific devotee. It's following some specific devotee. And this is a very special practice. You can see Shiva Prabhupada quotes Bhaktisiddhantaji here. Chaitanya Charitamrita advises those who are neophytes to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in the regulative devotional service. That's why he bought the rules of the Lord according to the directions of Scripture. In this way, a neophyte can gradually develop attachment for Krishna's name, form, fame, form, qualities, and so forth. This is at the end. So attachment, uh, as asakti, as asakti because of the very strong attachment, a person can 
uh, <coughs> more or less clearly understand what is his eternal rasa, what is his, who does he follow eternally. But at any rate, it's, it's uh, rather dangerous to begin this before Anartha Niviti is completed, before Nishta is completed. This is a large topic which also oftentimes is exploited um, you know, on the boundaries of Islam. We will discuss it. So let's finish what Bakisandri is saying. So one develops attachment. When, was one, when one has developed such attachment, he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna even without following the regulative principles. That means that he is not governed by regulative principles. And it, uh, regulative principles are not uh, what impels him, what pushes him, inspires him. This stage is called Raga Bhakti, or devotional service in spontaneous love. At that stage, the devotee can follow in the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of Krishna and Vrindavan. This is the key word, one of the eternal associates. It means a specific. And let's hear next. Uh, this is called Raga Nuga. So, a devotee of Vrindavan, we will hear which in a moment, uh, is Ragatmika. And by meditating and following, we are becoming Raga Nuga, Raga Anuga. We are following this Raga Bhakta, Ragatmika Bhakta. Raga Nuga Bhakti, or spontaneous devotional service, can be executed <coughs> in the Shantarasa when one aspires to be like Krishna's cows. So you can select a cow in Vrindavan, Dhavali, Shama, Vrindanga Mukhi, Head like Mridanga, <laughs> then you think, oh, she's Krishna scratches her, you know, with her, her neck, and then uh, she moves and she waits for Krishna to call her name on the japa. Uh, Krishna has a japa, mm -hmm. and he in the evening he counts the he chants the names of the of the cows, <clears throat> and then they come, <laughs> and sometimes one of them uh, stays back because she thinks, does Krishna remember me? So then uh, Krishna you know, comes to her name and, and you know, Shatamukhi, Shatamukhi, and then she says, oh, 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 and she comes running, <laughs> Krishna remembered me. <laughs> so a cow or the stick, which has several sticks, uh, or flute, a flute in the hand of Krishna, or the flowers around the garland uh, around Krishna's neck. So this is from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur. Sometimes, sometimes some devotees claim there is no Shantarasa in uh, Vrindavan, that uh, it's, uh, Shantarasa is excluded, but you can see that uh, even though in Vrindavan everybody has some Madhurya, it's, all, it's Madhurya Dham. Still, Bhaktisiddhanta just speaks about quite specific uh, Shantarasa uh, devotees, and he mentions Shantarasa here. But some devotees say that, okay, cow has the Vatsali mood, she thinks she's, she's the mother of Krishna, <laughs> and things like this. Uh, the, the, the trees, they are uh, like uh, servants and uh, somebody else. Like, um, the fruit? Yeah, they offer the fruits. No, the flute. The flute? Uh, <laughs> the flute, I don't know. Devotees <laughs> uh, blame the flute that uh, the flute is the lover of Krishna. In the Dasya Rasa, one follows in the footsteps of servants like Chitraka, Patraka, or Raktaka. So they are, you know, bringing water to bathe Krishna, and then after he's bathed, they bring uh, brazier, bra brazier, how do you call it? It's, it's such a you know, um, tray with the uh, coal burning and with uh, aburu and other uh, uh, incense, frankincense, they put on the coal and it creates very uh, fragrant, uh, very fragrant uh, smoke and they keep it under Krishna's hair. So one, one servant st stands in the back with this tray and an another is drying uh, Krishna's hair over this. And then the hair is, has, gets a very nice smell from, from that, uh, when they are serving like this. In the friendly Sakyarasa, one can become a friend like Baladev, Sridam or Sudam, so one meditates. Sridam, Sudam, Subal, with his um, cover voice. In the Vatsali Rasa, characterized by parental affection, one can become like Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. So one meditates how Yashoda uh, serves Krishna, how she sings uh, 
sings about Krishna, how she looks, how she uh, cares about Krishna. So this is, this is the meditation. And in the Madhurya Rasa, characterized by conjugal love, one can become like Shimati Radharani and her lady friends, such as Lalita, and her serving maids, Manjaris, like Rupa and Radhi. This is the essence of all instruction in the matter of devotional service. So, so this is the uh, arrival of the Bhakti. This is the most secret uh, practice. And we have a connection with a specific hero. And we, med we meditate on a, sp a sp specific rasa or a specific role in Krishna Lila. So that, this is Raghunanda Bhakti. It doesn't mean just spontaneously being attracted to a devotional service. It means also knowing what uh, rasa, in, in what relationship you are, you are with Krishna. So this is uh, Raghunanda Bhakti. And certainly it was misunderstood and misapplied in um, our tradition, in many places, and uh, around our tradition, there, there is a misapplication of that. You want to hear about it? Yes. <laughs> Some, again, sometimes you have these, uh, you know, devotees are coming to you and they are saying, oh, are you practicing uh, Rana Bhakti? This is the, that's what uh, Mahaprabhu has brought, that's why he came. Mm -hmm. He said he's not satisfied with Vaidhi Bhakti, Bhakti. It's a Chaitanya Chaitanya. That only Ragamar can please him. Are you practicing Ragamar? And then you think, oh my god, oh my god, am I practicing? <laughs> and then, then they say, you must practice Ragamar, otherwise you will go to Vaikuntha. <laughs> they try to scare you. <laughs> and you will go to Vaikuntha. And you say, oh, no, no, only, only not to Vaikuntha. And then they say, our Guru Maharaj, <coughs> he's, giving, he's giving lectures now, and um, this is, this is um, you know, he can explain, he explains the Gopi Bhav very nicely, and uh, this is the highest rasa, and this is the highest relationship with Krishna, and you can, you can learn about it, hear, hear about it. But uh, if you, actually know what serving in the bhakti, then such, a, such kind of a presentation is very funny. Because what is Raganuga Bhakti? Raganuga Bhakti is a spontaneous attraction in the, in the, the definition it says. It's the attraction which is free, which is not based on fear, <clears throat> which is not impelled by uh, Shastra, not just because Shastra says, which is not uh, impelled by logic, so not, no, not, not by logic, not by Shastra, not by fear. And how do these people often preach to you? They try to scare you, <laughs> that you will go to Vaikuntha. They explain to you with logic <laughs> why you must practice uh, Ragamar. And uh, then they give you Shastri codes, you know, why <laughs> uh, you, know, you must practice Raghunanda <laughs> Bhakti. So uh, if, you, if you know something about Raghunanda Bhakti, it's very funny. <laughs> but they try to, uh, basically, it's just a marketing thing. <clears throat> try to get people. So, Raga Bhakti is a spontaneous attraction when, when we realize our eternal relationship with Krishna. And therefore, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, in his time especially, it was very prevalent <coughs> that people would be given Siddha Pranali from the very beginning. Nowadays, they don't have it so easy. Nowadays, they, you know, they already have some standards to compare with, um, but still you have a lot of these people who are, you know, at the daytime they are very devoted, devoted in the nighttime something else. Yeah. So, that, that's why, but it's not necessarily that he was preaching very strongly, and Srila Prabhupada in his mood, he was also preaching very strongly against um, cheap imitation of these things. He wrote a whole book called uh, Prakrita Rasa Shatatushan, 
uh, <clears throat> a hundred defects of uh, mundane rasa. And then he, 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 there is a lot of, you know, na, 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 that spontaneous devotion cannot arise until anarthas are removed. And if one thinks that one can have uh, mundane attraction and spiritual attraction, then one is wrong. And if one is teaching a disciple who is not <clears throat> purified for material desires about uh, his eternal uh, rasa relationship with Krishna, then one is wrong. And he was, he's quite strong there. The idea is that, you know, uh, if I haven't purified myself from anarthas, then invariably I will definitely be impelled to, uh, I'll be motivated by pride. You know, I, will, I will take it, uh, I will, I will uh, almost, you know, 100% you know, discover that I am definitely an Anjari. <laughs> Because in the Shastra and logically it's the highest, <laughs> right? And I want to be on, on the top. And uh, by meditation, without sufficient purity and control of the mind, the material desires will arise. And we see this uh, happening in both the younger devotees and in the very old practitioners who are initiated, you know, not in our line, but outside. Uh, material desires arise and they create havoc in spiritual life. I, I know this first hand, uh, no, second hand, because I have friends who went over, uh, got reinitiated, and then um, you know, they, they saw this with their own eyes. Heaven, no eyes also. These things. So at least one has to make one's heart pure of anarthas before one starts cult cultivating some specific rasa. And uh, that doesn't mean that we avoid topics about uh, Vrindavan or Radha Krishna or Gopis and Krishna. It means that we do not cultivate specifically just these topics. When Prabhupada discovered that there was this uh, Gopi Bhava club in uh, <coughs> Los Angeles, and Prabhupada was furious. He said uh, that uh, why are they reading only about gopis? That what, Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj are not good enough for them? Yeah, they're not pure enough for them? So they said, but Prabhupada, you know, in, in, in Chaitanya Chaitanya, it says that uh, uh, Gopi Bhav is the highest. It says, it means these people don't understand. The highest is, uh, they are all transcendental. All these Bhavas are transcendental. And uh, each practitioner thinks that his Bhava is the best. And uh, if they are so elevated, then why do they, uh, you know, make bellies to the, to the girls? You know, this club, you know, these uh, participants of this club, why, why do they make uh, big bellies to the girls? Mm -hmm. Make them pregnant. So Prabhupada was, was quite furious about it. <clears throat> because these two do not, uh, are not supposed to be combined. You know? one, if one actually is attracted to the spiritual rasa, one will not be attracted to the mundane rasa. To, to the material relationships. So, this is a hot subject. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we see, you know, if you stay in Renown, you see this. And then you see someone uh, giving classes on um, a renunciate, giving classes on uh, um, some very, yeah, on Surata Katamrita. Of all the books, this is probably the most erotic book. It's just directly erotic book about erotic pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And, and this uh, renunciate, young renunciate, <clears throat> because that's you know his guru is teaching like this. So he is giving every evening he's giving classes uh, to a group of uh, you know, maybe one or two boys are there, but mostly girls. <clears throat> and he's giving classes from this Rasa Shastra because it's uh, from Radha Krishna. And uh, you know, after two or three years, he's of course no longer a renunciate. He's uh, you know found, or he was found, because when we are not uh, so, uh, corresponding pattern, then it stirs. It's so sweet, <laughs> it's so sweet, and it's uh, describing the pure interact, the purest, the most attractive interaction of male and feminine principle. 
So therefore, it will uh, stir attraction. If there is some trace of material attraction, it will make it very strong. And uh, then the person may not be able to continue in, his, uh, in such a pure uh, position as he was. So there are many warnings about it. Prabhupada may have give some very strong warning, warnings. Prabhupada uh, you know, says that Siddha Pranali is bogus and that uh, if you hear without, about pastimes of Gopis and Krishna with material desires you go to hell. And uh, he's, he's very strong about it. He, he was <laughs> it doesn't mean, also Prabhupada was saying, it doesn't mean we boycott the gopis. We read. We read the whole Bhagavatam. We read the whole Chaitanya Chaitanya. Even though Bhakti Siddhantaji, he would uh, forbid some of his disciples to read uh, Antya Lila. He would say, don't read Antya Lila. It's too, uh, too elevated, too esoteric for you. It can be mis misunderstood. <coughs> but we read. Uh, consecutively, you know, it means that when it comes in the book, we read about it. But you don't just study this part. Also, Bhakti Sananda says that his Thakur said, as you mentioned in the morning, that if somebody studies the tenth canto and then doesn't go on to the eleventh canto, he will fall down because he, uh, he, he will uh, be prone to misunderstanding who Krishna is and how Krishna performs his pastimes. And only the uh, highly philosophical. 11th canto, the Buddha Gita, and this you know, very hardcore knowledge sets him straight, <laughs> and he can, can understand properly. So we, we study, but cultivating some specific mood, that's already a very special, very special prerogative for one who has awakened a spontaneous attachment. And then one of the one of the points is that one uh, a per, a Raghunanda Bhakta doesn't have to follow the regulatory principles <coughs> without following the regulatory principles. So what does it mean? I remember I was once researching something on the internet and it, uh, I ended up on some website uh, of exactly these uh, official Raghunanda Bhaktas from our holiest Radhakund. And uh, they were discussing one statement that uh, Vaidhi, that Vaidhi Bhakta follows re regulative principles, where, whereas regulative principles follow uh, Raganuga Bhakta. So Vaidhi Bhakta follows these principles, but uh, these principles follow the Raganuga Bhakta. And they were discussing what does it mean. And it, it was quite interesting that no one could come up with, uh, with any explanation of, of this. But uh, if, if, uh, if one uh, studied what is, what is Raghunanda Bhakti, it's explained in more detail in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Srinur Goswami and also in Bhakti Sandarva by Srijiva Goswami. Then you, you can see that uh, the idea is that for uh, Vaiti Bhakta, <coughs> you know, there is a principle and this, this video, and if this principle pulls him, like you know, in the morning, uh, you are sleeping, and then the alarm clock goes, du -du 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 and you wake up, and ah, and you will use <laughs> the alarm clock to sleep it off. And then, and then you want to sleep, and it's very difficult, you know, and you are tired. Uh, but then, you know, there is this principle, you know, Mangalarati, go to Mangalarati, and you know, this principle, and I say, okay, you know. And, this principle drags you, know, and you go, okay. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it drags you to the Mangala. And then, you know, you go, and some sort of dog. <laughs> but for, for, uh, for a Raghunanda Bhakta, it's, uh, you know, he goes to bed and he thinks, oh, it's um, so sad, I have to waste my time on this sleep. But tomorrow, tomorrow again, I will do Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and I will see <coughs> Radha Shema Sundar, I will see Goranitai again, and, um, in just a few hours, okay, I take some rest, he takes rest, and then he wakes up in the middle of the night and he looks, is it time? He may wake 10 minutes before the uh, clock, or you know, sometimes one minute exactly before the, the uh, alarm clock goes off, you know, sometimes happens. And then, and, then, 
And he says, oh, this is the time. Yes, now I will see my, you know, corny time. I rather show soon. He goes, he takes a shower, you know, and then he is, oh, he's so inspired. Now I will, I will have the time for chanting and I will see the morning darshan of, of my deities. And he's going to Mangalarati. And as he's going, you know, he's going and this principal, Mangalarati, runs behind him and says, this is me, this is me. <laughs> what, he, what he does, that's, that's me. Huh? I'm the principal that, that, you know, that he does. So, you know, the principle follows him. In other words, Eraganoga Bhakta will spontaneously be inspired to do uh, what this principle says. And this principle is actually modeled on the behavior of Eraganoga Bhakta. Eraganoga Bhakta doesn't need principles because he will do this himself, spontaneously. He cannot wait. <laughs> you, you, you probably have, would have to chain him to uh, prevent him from, from doing all these things. He, would, he will do this spontaneously. All of these things. And on his behavior, modeled on his behavior, we have this principle. Oh, okay, so you can do like this, you go to Pam Mangalarati, you chant, you know, okay, so these are the principles for, for us. You know. So act like this, maybe we'll become like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that, that's uh, uh, Raghavan Bhakta. <clears throat> he has a spontaneous, uh, a spontaneous taste. He cannot wait to, to, to be able to again engage in the original service. That's spontaneity. And of course, he already. Krishna for him is not a generic uh, god. He already is a specific. He has a specific relationship with Krishna. He already knows that he is my lover, or he is my uh, master, or he is my friend, and we uh, play together. So he has uh, a specific knowledge uh, about. It. And then uh, regarding Siddha Pranali. <coughs> It's mentioned in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Prabhupada speaks about this in Nectar of Devotion very, in a very condemning uh, manner. Uh, however, it's described also in Bhakti Nautakur Jayavadharma, and there is one very interesting passage there. It, it describes there that uh, <coughs> Mahaprabhu Chaitanya gave two paths. He gave a path of Siddha Pranali to that's where you get, where Guru gives you uh, the 11 uh, characteristics. Your name, you know, that your name is Malati Manjari and you have you wear a green sari with uh, silver stars and your service is to uh, cook milk you know, and then you serve your husband, you're from this family, this is your group, this is your village, this is your age, this is your service, so 11 things about, about you know, this. So, so uh, it, it was, this process is, was given by Shishtani Mahabharata to Vakrakshya <coughs> Pandit, who gave it to Gopal Guru Goswami, who gave it to his disciple Dhyan Chandra Goswami, and there is a book, uh, Govind Darshan Smarnapati, which describes it, and it's a bona fide method. <coughs> And then he gave another method to Raguna Das Goswami through the chanting of the holy name. So the person uh, immerses his heart in chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. And uh, <clears throat> the name reveals to the devotee his, his eternal relationship. With Krishna, he's so the name reveals all these things. And then Bhakti Motaku writes there um, that the method that was given to Raghunath Das Goswami through the name is more natural, easier, and quicker. Sometimes they think, oh, it would be so nice, you know. And not only things, so many devotees just go. For some reason, for some reason, it's. Uh, most popular among uh, Russians and Swiss devotees, you know, because uh, uh, Russians are sentimental, and Swiss they need to have the best. <laughs> you know, it has to be the best of the best. So you know, these two groups are probably the most prominent <laughs> there. Uh, so they go and they uh, try to get this, and they think you know you, you get, and then you know, just imagine you have the meditation, you have all the mantras. And you have, uh, you know, the name, and you know who you are. You are a gopi, and you are meditating on it. Yeah? So it seems to be easy. And, but Bhakti Nautaku says that it's actually more difficult than having a revealed to the name, because it requires a very highly trained, a, a 
capacity or ability for yogic meditation. That's why it's more difficult. In other, in other words, your mind has to be absolutely controlled for this meditation. And then this Siva Pranali, in fact, admittedly, it's, it's still not really an eternal soul. It's uh, basically a template for meditation. Still, it has to be revealed. It still has to be revealed to you. It's very rare that, that uh, somebody will be actually able to reveal to you your eternal soul. That happens to Narottam Das Goswami and some others, you know, some very special cases. But nowadays they give it as a, you know, a generic, also in Dhyan Chandra Goswami's book, there is a generic process. How do you select a name? How do you know, what do you give to the Sadhaka? And it's a, it requires a person who is actually able to meditate, which is a very high, uh, very high requirement. And I have, you know, I have friends who got it, and then the result was not very impressive, not very satisfactory. It's difficult, in fact. It's, uh, the, the most practical way, you know, Brindakund was given to Iskon by Madhava and Dasbhavari, who was initiated in this. They are they mostly initiated in this practice. And then, you know, by the end of his life, he said that Bhakti Siddhantaji was correct. He was absolutely correct. There is no other way except the Hare Nam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. And therefore, he uh, bequeathed, he, he gave this Brindakund, a very special place, to Iskon Trivulam to, to take care of him. Because he, he, he said, yes, this, this is the correct way for this age. Who, who, can, who can just meditate? Uh, in such a fixed uh, manner. And you can read about this meditation also here from uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasadhi Dhaku's commentaries. So there are uh, several stages to describe here. In the neophyte stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Katha. This is called Shravanadasha, so hearing. Uh, by constantly hearing the transcendent, transcendental holy name of Krishna and hearing of his transcendental form, qualities, and pastimes, one can attain to the stage of acceptance called Varanadash. So let me accept, I'm a servant. Krishna is my God. So the doubts are uh, dispelled with this. This is near the end. Perfect. When one attains that stage, he becomes attached to the hearing and speaking of Krishna Katha also. So he's attached. When one is able to chant in ecstasy, he attains the stage of smaranavasta, the stage of remembering. And there are and there are five levels. There is uh, <clears throat> there is dharana, dhyana, so this anusmriti, smaranavasta, remembering. So dharana, dhyana, uh, samadhi, um, anusmriti, uh, anusmriti, and dhruva anusmriti. So uh, that means that you remember occasionally. <clears throat> Uh, first, first dharana. That means according to uh, smarana. First smarana. So smarana means you, uh, you know, you just read and remember occasionally. Dharana means you remember according to <coughs> Yoga Shastra. You remember for twelve seconds. This is dharana. <coughs> Kuma Purana says that uh, if you remember for twelve seconds. This is dharana, or fixing the mind on the object of your meditation. If you remember 12 times 12, which is 2 minutes uh, and 24 seconds, 12, time, 12 times 12, this is dhyana. So after 2 minutes, if for 2 minutes you have nothing in your mind, you say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and your mind has Exactly this, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You say Rama Rama Hare Hare, and your mind has Rama Rama Hare Hare. Also remembering that this is the name of Krishna, not just the, the sounds. That this is Krishna. But even if you just focus on the sound, that's, that will be for, for 12 seconds, this is Dharana. For uh, <clears throat> two minutes, this is Dhyana. And 12 times that, which is uh, how many? 22 minutes? Anybody can. Uh, Calculate. It's like almost half an hour, so it's more or less. <coughs> <clean. coughs> 
24? Nein. Nicht 28? Ja, okay. Uh, it's uh, okay, minus uh, one fifth, it's minus 12. 28 minutes. I, I heard 28 minutes. 28 minutes. 28 minutes and uh, 48 seconds. <laughs> then this is Samadhi. This is Samadhi. And then there is, uh, before that, Smarana. The previous stage is Smarana. So that means you are just, you just remembered Krishna once. And after that is Dhruva Anusmriti, constant, constant remembrance. Dhruva Anusmriti. You remember all the time. You never stop remembering Krishna. This is something we can try to practice when we are chanting. So 12 seconds, this is like three or four mantras. Can you be fixed on Hare Krishna mantra completely for three or four mantras? That's dharma. And then you can, and in Yoga Shastra, there, is, there, there are different terms. Like if there is uh, two dharanas, it, it's called opening the eyes. If you are able to, to do uh, four dharanas in the row, 12 seconds, 12 seconds, 12 seconds, you know, without any break, then it's called beginning of joy. <laughs> and if you do like seven or eight, it says it's called like coming of bliss. <laughs> and you know, it's each, the, the further you go, the more blissful you become. Because this is uh, the pacification of the mind. So this is something we can practice. Yes. So, so this is also like Vaishnava interpretation of Ashtanga Yoga, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. The, the only difference is that we, uh, we meditate on Krishna, and we, or, or for us it's meditation on the Hare Krishna mantra. And uh, we do not uh, identify as, uh, you know, we don't, we don't identify <coughs> as ourselves with, uh, with the Lord, but we identify ourselves as servants of the Lord. And the uh, difference from tantric meditation is that we uh, <coughs> meditate in Vrindavan. Uh, ourselves and Krishna in Vrindavan. So this is from Kurma Purana. something you can try to practice. See if you can chant three, four mantras with total absorption. Of course, even one mantra is good. <laughs> even one name is good. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Hare. Our goal and purpose is to become spontaneously attracted to Krishna in some eternal, specific eternal relationship with Krishna. From that point, we are moved by a spontaneous emotion and we follow uh, an eternal guide. So from there, it flows very naturally. Uh, however, to be able to get to that level, we have to become free from anarthas or uh, the negative habits of our mind. So that entails control of our, of our mind and that's why we have meditation every morning. And that's uh, why we have the sitting meditation, the jumping and dancing meditation, <laughs> and the singing meditation, and the most merciful of all meditations, the reading meditation, you know, because the book has uh, you know, hands which catch your mind, you know. <laughs> if you chant, you know, the mind goes very far. <laughs> but when you read, then if, even if your mind is very disturbed, the book somehow catches, you know, your, your mind and then after 20 minutes, after half hour, even if you are very disturbed, if you continue for half hour, after half hour your mind finally will become directed towards the, the Shastra, towards the book. <coughs> so it's a very merciful form of meditation. We practice meditation to, to direct it towards Krishna. Also, there is even more merciful meditation when we do service for Krishna. Right? When we do something for Krishna. Uh, in this very uh, you know, Henry Ford, Ambarish Prabhu, uh, grand, grandson of, Hen of Henry Ford, Ford uh, he uh, said, he, he told Bhakti Gyan Maharaj that he knows a very uh, easy and uh, effective way to fix one's spots on something. He says that as a businessman, he knows a, 
100% working method for fixing one's uh, thoughts on, uh, on something. And how does it work? It says that if you invested a lot of money somewhere, then you cannot stop thinking about it. <laughs> you know, if you bought some stock, then you are always checking. You know, is it uh, how is this stock? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it is it you know how is it how is it how is it moving? Or if you invested in some property or whatever it is, uh, if you invested your time or uh, energy, then you, you cannot stop but think about it. About this. So in the same way, if we invest our energy, our service, uh, our our strength in in Krishna's service, then we will think about Krishna. So this is a very merciful way of thinking about Krishna. At the same time, it is uh, meant to make, make our mind more controlled and uh, so that we can uh, also chant attentively, so that we can listen to our chanting and, and think about think about Krishna. Uh, so, anybody tried different methods for listening the mantra and hearing the mantra? As we discussed yesterday, that the first stage of chanting we just chant. You know, we just take the job and chant. And the second stage is we try to listen. This is, this is an, act, an active practice. So, we try to control our mind. We listen. So we not only chant, because chanting you can, you know, you can just and then we you know, think about whatever. But listening means we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and we try to listen. What am I chanting? <laughs> Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram. And when we listen attentively, then at one point we can hear, actually. So we not only listen, it's not just a control of the mind, but actually the name becomes revealed to us. We, uh, we hear Krishna. So that's the first meeting with Krishna, hearing, hearing Krishna. And if you hear the name, then it's an unforgettable experience. This is something you will remember even if it happened 20 years ago or 15 years ago. You never forget it. If you once heard the holy name, it's, it's an unforgettable experience. Uh, and we should, of course, direct our heart to uh, hearing. But Prajan Prabhu was saying that he was a devotee for uh, three or four years, and then he was in Tokyo, Japan. You remember this, yeah? uh, and then he was uh, in the chanting in the morning in the temple, walking around, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And then all of a sudden, he heard Hare Krishna mantra, and he was shocked. And he thought, "But what was I doing before? You know, for these three years. <laughs> so for three years, I've been chanting, and, and I never heard. And now all of a sudden, I've heard Hare Krishna mantra for the first time. It made him uh, thoughtful." You know, they have these beautiful retreats for, for the Japa, Japa retreats. Mm. Listening. So, uh, so, who tried to practice something for chanting? You tried, you tried, you tried, you tried, you tried. So, almost all of us tried. <clears throat> so, maybe we can uh, break into small groups of uh, three or four. So, are, and then we can present different techniques that are possible to uh, apply to help us improve our chanting. Mm -hmm. So you are five and you are seven. Yeah. So maybe uh, maybe you can be all together, <laughs> and maybe you can be. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you three and, and you four. Okay. And, and Everybody has to present at least one technique that helps to improve our chanting. Sie sagt, Hare Krishna zu seine, uh, zu ihren um, Liebling. Liebling Person, die sie liebt, und also. so sich vorzustellen, ob sie mit Liebling spricht. Es war ein bisschen anders. So es, war, es, es war ein bisschen anders. Ich habe gesagt, bevor du Japa chanst, ja, du kannst diese Vorstellung haben, du gehst äh, in den Garten und dann siehst du in, äh, dein Liebling. Ja, und dann plötzlich ist dein Liebling sogar Krishna. Und du bist schon in diese Gefühle. Und du kommst ihm ganz nah und sagst ihm, 
Хари Кришна. Something else uh, based on emotions or that involves our emotions? We have some yeah, like once Smita Krishna was here and I asked him how to like he was saying you should pray for Krishna for me and he said a nice message, he said that what he does is he lo overloads himself with service and then when he realizes I don't have the capacity, he becomes humble and then it's very easy to chant in a humble state of mind and he, he says he can really cry for Krishna. Uh -huh. So cry for Krishna, that, yeah, when he realizes being, I don't uh, have the capacity. Understanding we are, not, we are unable to yeah, do this. Uh, in fact, Srila Prabhupada mentions this in <coughs> prayers of Queen Kunti, Queen Kunti in the first canto, that you have to learn how to chant helplessly. Nyanjana mm -hmm. Sarnasha also says that this is what uh, he finds the most effective uh, method to chant helplessly. So, uh, when you can enter this helpless mood, this immediately attracts Krishna's, in Krishna's attention. And, uh, have complete shelter in him, and only he can help us. Yeah, okay, this is Something else? Uh, based on emotions? Yes? The one on based on fear. So. On fear? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm very fearful, maybe that's all. But uh, when I, like, I, I try to think sometimes when I'm, when I'm very tired and I don't, know, I, I don't have the power to concentrate, then I just think that I could die at any moment. And when I come into this mood that I, it, it's actually true, then I, I wake up and I'm very. I can be very mm -hmm. You can die, yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's good to die at least for two hours, <laughs> at least for one hour, forever. But we can, you know, because we think about so many things we need to do. But we can tell the mind that uh, just suppose it, that you died, you know, things would go on anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing would happen to the world <laughs> if I died. Yeah. So just imagine that I have died. Right? So if you, you know, one hour, two hours, I'm dead. Yeah? So let me just have my japa and. For everything else, I'm dead. <laughs> okay, that's ein Mal in Leben now, okay. Die letzte Mal. I I just remember what I, I used to to do. I used to chant with a piece of paper, and whenever something was coming, because mm, as manager, no, yeah. then write it down. Yeah, yeah. Take it out of the mind, because otherwise, if you have to remember something, that means you have to repeat it in the mind. Uh, any feeling or any thought. Remembrance means you have to run it over and over. So it's good to always have some. Uh, I always try to carry, you know, some pen and piece of paper, you know, that I can just write it down, and then your mind is not burdened by it, and you don't forget it. Well, sometimes some so Krishna can send some. You know, it's actually quite uh, quite usual that as soon as you try to concentrate, then so many problems. Uh, get their solutions because your mind becomes a little peaceful yeah? and then things become clear <laughs> and then you suddenly see oh that's how you do this that's how you do that oh and that's how you solve that problem <laughs> and as soon as you start chanting start becoming a little peaceful then boom boom boom, boom so everything becomes clear <laughs> and uh, yeah well so then yeah you can just jot down you know just write some one or two key words don't take a big notebook with you. <laughs> 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 Just a few words. To, um, yes? Yeah, Eva. Uh, mit so uh, einem Zustand, ich habe euch erzählt, mit Liebevoll, ja? Das gibt es keine solche Sinn auch in meinem. Ich gibt, äh, äh, eben, wenn ich liebe, ich habe nichts zu, do, zu, do, zu yes. tun. Yes. Yes. Nichts, mm -hmm. etwas. Yes. Und eben, ah, eben nicht mein Geschmack, aber noch eine war Lehre. Äh, andere Devote hat gelernt. Du äh, einfach rufe Krishna wie Kinder Mami. 
Mami, Mami, Krishna, aber das ist irgendwie nicht mein Geschmack. Mami, hilf mir und so. Ich bin selber für, kann für meine Mutter helfen, ja? Eben, wenn in Realität. Aber das ist auch für viele Leute, viele Devote, das hilft. Auch rufen Krishna. Und das ist auch mit solchen, wenn es so viele emotionale Gefühle drin Mantra, dann gibt es nicht mehr so Logik, Logikprozesse gibt es schon gestoppt wegen der Emotionen, dann gibt es nicht solche Momente. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, now what methods for using our rational ability? or our intelligence or willpower did you discuss? What other methods do you have for using our you know, willpower? Do you have it? Yes. <coughs> just um, maybe a day before or before sleeping so we can uh, just fix or uh, the most important part of the day, the chanting in the morning yes. so we can prepare in the mind so and uh, yeah, prepare that we have a good chant. Very good, yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. <coughs> we prepare from the evening. Uh, bef uh, first of all, we go to bed earlier, <laughs> so that uh, mm -hmm. we are, you know, in the morning, we are not just doing a zombie chanting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <coughs> even though, uh, even in a very tired state, sometimes you can mm -hmm. chant amazing japa, mm -hmm. amazingly well. It mm -hmm. may also work. But uh, the best is to have enough sleep, but also uh, to have to make a sankalpa or take a decision, make a decision in the evening, plan that tomorrow morning I will chant a very concentrated japa, a very dedicated japa. And this, you can even write it down. It's very good if you write down some short plan for tomorrow, what you plan to do what, and ascribe, uh, assign what is the most important, what is less important, what is uh, urgent but not important, important, important but, but not urgent, you, you know, like the A, B, C, very important, mm -hmm. less important, and so forth. And uh, you write it down. So then also, during the sleep, your mind sort of prepares. And then in the morning, also, the first thing, you already, it's already there in the back of your mind, that I'm, I'm going to chant. And it's also very, very helpful that if, when you wake up, the first thing, you know, like in that joke that it says that uh, there are two kinds of people. One kind of people, they wake up and say, uh, uh, Oh my Lord, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> and the other kind of people uh, wake up and say, Oh good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> so, oftentimes it, it's us, you know, we wake up and say, Ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to help me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, this, is, this is the wrong, the bad programming. Try to, the first thought, see uh, your ideal day and ideal successful behavior and ideal successful functioning from the very first seconds of your waking. It's good if you prepare this in the evening a little bit, you know, but. Uh, this is an immediately picture the, the ideal day, the ideal job or the ideal uh, work. It, it tunes your whole day and also uh, inspires you to get out of the bed <laughs> because uh, things don't have to be terrible and especially for us since we are devotees so, devotees, so everything is actually wonderful, all we do is excited. And uh, yeah, so prepare from, from the evening, then in the morning you can, you can be uh, already focused clearly on what you're doing. Okay. Sometimes it also helps to um, check one round faster. Okay, one round faster. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jump becomes more like the rolling stone. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, because sometimes we, uh, the thoughts are in the gaps. <laughs> I remember one devotee, uh, here's one more for, for the rational. Uh, I remember long ago one devotee, he told me that you try, count every mantra. So that by the end of the round, you have 108. So I thought, hmm, this is interesting. So I tried. You know, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna
So in the beginning, it's you know you get 106 or you know worse if you get you know 86 <laughs> or, if you, or sometimes you get 112 or, something, you know, or you or you lose the count. It means you you, you became you became distracted. But the funny thing was that when I started counting and I before I was chanting seven and a half minutes, but when I chanted with the counting and I looked at my watch, it was five minutes per round. So all of a sudden, you know, rounds became 50% faster. It was quite interesting because it turned out that, uh, you know, I, I, it means I focused and then it cut out all the draws, all the you know, unnecessary. S similar effect I, I had with, an, with another uh, more of the rational approach is when you have Nama Yantra and you have the Hare Krishna mantra, like uh, some kind of a of course, this is not my preferred format. My preferred format is two two names yeah, in each row. Bhakti uh, uh, sorry, Korkishor Das Babaji Maharaj has Nama Yantra in his Bhajan Kutir, um, Hare Krishna Mantra. He has four names in a row. But for, for me personally, I find it works the best if I have two names in each line. And uh, then you, you know, just Hare Krishna, you chant and you see. So this way you engage your eyes. And you engage your and, and you try to connect it. I I I had a similar effect. That the rounds were five minutes, uh, five, five minutes per round. Because uh, you, you follow with your eyes each time. You see, if if I have two uh, names in the line, then the, the eyes don't have to go. They go just down. Here, that's why I don't uh, like this slide because it goes you know there. <laughs> but uh, this way you go just straight down. It's a bona fide method. I was also using my mobile to chronometer my rounds. Yeah, you can uh, check the time. You can the, and sometimes it was amazing how long I. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's what Satsuru Maharaj always does. He, he, you know, he tries to speed them up and uh, he measures how, how long they change. Did you have some time? Yeah. Normally, I say that Satwa Guna is a good. Regelmäßige Leben, ja? Das ist eben gut strukturierte Leben, das ist etwas gut. Dann eben am Morgen changst du oder changst du nie, aber äh, du immer, äh, jeden Morgen ist deine glücklich, wirklich glücklich. Ich war immer sehr glücklich am Morgen. Ich immer mit Lachen auf, immer von Kindheit. Und das nur, wenn das gut strukturierte Leben geht, wenn das Stress, wenn das äh, selber machst du. Keine Struktur, ah, ich, es geht nicht, dann du, äh, bist du immer müde am Morgen. Das ist kein Morgen, das ist glücklich. Und sehr gut äh, strukturiert Leben, auch mit Hare Krishna, Chanting vor Arbeit. Alle äh, weint, oh, ich habe Arbeit, ich kann nicht chanten. Wenn ich, ich habe schon lange hier gearbeitet, ja immer. Wenn ich gut mache, das fünf am Morgen, vorher arbeite ich. Lache und gehe Hare Krishna in Berg. <lacht> so, Aber das war nicht immer so. Nur wenn ich wirklich das mache. Satik so, so, Lifestyle, everything very scheduled, structured. Ja. And then you can be more <coughs> happy with this. Uh, uh, you had something? Um, <coughs> Hare Krishna Prabhu told me, uh, oh, I heard from him that he used a metronome. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. He's a very interesting guy. And, and then you can um, have tempo, a, a rhythm, yeah. you take tempo for chanting, and then you come into a flow, and then you can, then you can make it also faster, and then you come more into it, and this is, it should, it should be a very nice um, practice to, to, have the, to, to see the chanting as a melody, mm -hmm. to, to chant. Yeah. He's a musician. Yeah, he's, he's a, and you had some time? I had some. Oh, yeah. You, you, you ask something about willpower, no? Yes. Sometimes I'm doing like this, I will not take prasharam as yeah. long as my Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's also working nicely. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's how it lost our course system. <laughs> of course, he had 300,000 <laughs> names that he was, he was chanting. Yes. But also, one a good experience, I was exper uh, experiment experimentation with uh, closing the eyes mm -hmm. but then uh, mm -hmm. uh, watching this point actually mm -hmm. yeah, so you turn your eyes actually mm -hmm. and my mind was quiet I could I could really 
basically here. So I don't know if this is something. Yeah, it's, it's called Trataka and it's in, in itself it's one of the, uh, how is it called, Shiva, um, it's one of the Bandhas actually. It, and, uh, acts on the prana and it directs your prana. You know, if you look between the eyebrows, it also affects your prana and it helps concentration. Yeah, really. It's one of the uh, exercises for mind control. Yes? In this topic, what is about the breathing? Because I was also making some experiment in the breathing. But, I, you know, I was like breathing as much as I could and then chanting the mantra, chanting so many mantras as possible without breathing. And then also my runs came at five minutes. Uh -huh. But then I had to breathe again and I didn't like it. No? So <laughs> you, there is some system how she, to... She was so attached to chanting, she didn't like breathing. Yeah, she but didn't, I... didn't want to waste time for <laughs> breathing. <laughs> it was just, yeah, this, I, this big breathing, it was like... You know, I have a friend who uh, is a very active businessman. He has several businesses and he's quite... So, so he's... He, 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 I met him some years ago and now he said that... I asked him, how are your, how is your arthritis? How is your arthritis? How is your rheumatism? <laughs> you know, with pains in the knees and the bones. He said, you know, it's gone. And he says, you know how? By chanting. I said, how so? <laughs> he said, because I chant and breathe. And she, he described that method. So he said, I sit in the morning and he says, I, I can do uh, as many as 10 or 11 mantras on one breath. What? I could do three or four? Yes. So you can do 10 or 11 months. <laughs> <laughs> in a big lung, so. Maybe. And then he just inhales. <laughs> so, and also you can see some devotees, they chant on inhalation also. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I know it's true. But then, um, okay. But, but because, I mean, the breath should be kind of balanced. There should be the same number of... Um, Mantras, but well, the inhale and the exhale. These are different. If if inhalate, if exhalation, well, from the point of view of prana, if the exhalation is longer than inhalation, uh, it's just the cooling uh, process. It slows down the mind and uh, pacifies you. If you manage not to fall asleep, it will just make you very peaceful. If, you, if you're not falling asleep, it, it doesn't have to be all equal. I mean, these are there are different kinds of. They, they are just meant for different. Uh, they have different effects. If your inhalation is longer than exhalation, then it excites you, and maybe it can uh, raise the blood pressure. Also. But if, when you do it like this, it, it cools you down. Yeah, it's one of the, one of the things that. So, so he said he, he, because of that breathing, his arthritis went away. <laughs> but he said, of course, this is he said this is nothing. The main thing he says that uh, you know I enjoy my chanting because he says for us for grihastas he says this is this we we die if we don't chant. He says, if, you know, he said, you, at least you're in the temple, you know, but we are, he asked us, we are, and he has a very frantic business, you know, he has, you know, rotated big money, and uh, so he says, if I don't chant in the morning attentively, then I, I die, you know? yeah. <laughs> so then he, he was very uh, excited about this. Yeah, so breathing, something, uh, thank you for breathing. Of course, I, I tried, tried to do this. For some time, you know, I got uh, inspired by his uh, removal of arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> but then, after some time, I uh, it kind of for me it was mechanical. I couldn't couldn't, couldn't concentrate so much on the, uh, on the on the job on the name. Uh, I was more focused on the breathing, and so I didn't, didn't continue with that. But he he says it helps him to concentrate on the name. Actually, so. Uh, we can see there are actually hundreds of different methods and approaches. Main thing that we should do something every day, and every day we should improve. I remember I was once uh, standing in one, saying one go is flat, and I went on the balcony to chant my japa. And as I was chanting, I saw some uh, people on the bicycles, and these guys on the bicycles. They were doing, you know, they were standing still, they were jumping on, on top of these slabs, they were going forwards and backwards and sideways, and they were jumping off of these slabs. You know, I couldn't believe my eyes, you know, I was saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And then, and then I thought, you know, that uh, just with uh, how many, like one or two years of training, these people can do uh, these incredible things. 
And I thought, if I invested uh, such training in my chanting, <laughs> if I tried to balance my mind in my chanting, like these guys try to balance themselves on the bikes, what would be my chanting now? How would I chant? So if you train, if you train, practice makes one perfect. And recently I heard, I heard that uh, you know, some people, sometimes people object that perfect practice makes one perfect. And the guy said, uh, even imperfect practice will make one perfect. Because you just you keep practicing and then you are uh, moving somewhere. So every day we have to you know, have the ideal and try to move towards our ideal. Because this is the method. That's the Yuga Dharma. Chanting, chanting and singing the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And uh, there are many nice, amazing books. There is uh, Shachinanda Maharaja, several, many books. There is the Nectarian uh, Ocean of the Holy Name, there is uh, uh, Namrahasya, and there is uh, Bhaktivasaina Shlokas, uh, that's three, and I think there are some more. And then there is Danuldara Maharaja's Japa Meditation, then there is Gurijan uh, Prabhu's Japa, and there is uh, Bahani Dusami's The Art of Chanting. It's already six or seven books with Japa Reforms as Rubin Maharaja. So, and these books are packed with uh, tips and things that can help us to, uh, to do something. But as I mentioned yesterday, uh, the main thing we have to want to, <laughs> to move. So, uh, okay. we, our, our uh, aim is to, as Rupa Goswami says here, engage, be, be, uh, to engage our tongue and mind the whole day in, in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada speaks about the mind, because as we chant, you know, one day it, it works a little bit and we can chant and be a little focused, but then the next day again we chant and all kinds of uh, ideas pop up. So Prabhupada describes this in the purport. says, since the mind may be one's enemy or one's friend, one has to train the mind to become his friend. The Krishna consciousness movement is especially meant for training the mind. So this is a training movement. We are training the mind. <laughs> you know to be always engaged in Krishna's business. The mind contains hundreds and thousands of impressions. Sanskrit they call it samskaras and vasanas. Um, not only of this life, but also of many, many lives of the past. These impressions sometimes come in contact with one another and produce contradictory pictures. In this way, the mind's function can become dangerous for a conditioned soul. Students of psychology are aware of the mind's various psychological changes. So, uh, one such psychological study is Yoga Sutra, which describes how the mind works and what are these psychological changes. So, as we, <coughs> so how does it work? When we do something, uh, when we perform a selfish act, in other words, when we do something thinking uh, that I am the controller or I am the enjoyer or I am getting the approval, yes. So we have some selfish identification with that, then it creates a samskara, an impression. It becomes imprinted in our subtle body. And then this samskara is stored as vasana. So, so they are put together, you know, they are stored, archived, but in archive, if you put something in archive, it, you know, like, even here, even though these are holy books, they don't uh, actively, you know, uh, attack you. <laughs> but these vasanas being, being stored, archived in our, in our mind, they attack us. So uh, sometimes a memory just bubbles up, or sometimes we see something, and immediately it uh, connects in our mind. And then we ima start imagining how we could, could enjoy, and then it transforms into urge, I want to enjoy, and then the body becomes transformed. In the body, something starts changing, and then we can make a decision, and then again we do some some act. Like we may, I don't know, we may have bought uh, some cold drink, and we have on a hot day, we drink the hot, the, the, uh, in the hot sun, we drink some cold drink, and we think, oh, this is so good, I'm so happy, you know, it's, it's so tasty. And then it creates an impression, it's stored, and then I'm walking, and then I see somebody with the, you know, again with the bottle, and then. You know, the memory is stirred, and I imagine, mm, how would it, uh, you know, it's hot, how would it feel if I drank? So, kalpa, imagination. And then I feel an urge, and then bodily transformation. My 
mouth starts watering. You know, <clears throat> you know I, I, the body uh, is, is uh, transformed. And then I decide, decide, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm going to buy something. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we do. So, uh, therefore, it's important to to be able to stop here, to cut off this uh, psychological this psychological uh, process before we start imagining, not build the pictures, you know. The memory is stirred, uh, the, it, it bubbles up, the samskara, this vasana is stirred, but before you go into imagination, just to you know, redirect your mind, direct onto something else. Because otherwise it turns into vaga that we discussed in the beginning, and it pushes us, and then when the body is transformed, it's very difficult to stop and decision. So here, if it's a simple act, in fact, uh, maybe initiation helps you to stop it. You know, because you remember, I, I've given vows. You know, my guru Maharaj expects that I will follow my vows, and you, know, uh, you can stop maybe here. You uh, know, cases are there. <coughs> you can stop. But uh, to for the peace of mind and for purification, it's best not to indulge in, in the imagination. The same, same with the with the japa. When we chant, uh, when these things come up, uh, don't follow this train of thought. You know, be able to to stop uh, timely. And again, one of the yogic exercises is to, to trace back your steps. And then, when you when you track back, when you trace back your steps. It trains your mind some. It makes the mind becomes more alert. Did you try it? I don't think so. Yeah. <coughs> so when you do this, then also you can notice what are your first uh, first point of departure. And then next, usually, usually it's well you can see for yourself what it is, but uh, for different. But there are some. Usually it's some sensory distraction, some you know. Some movement, some sound in the belly, or some sensation of itching, or something in the in the body, or some crack of the floor, or some devotee opening the door, some some sensory distraction, and then the mind catches that and goes, 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 goes. goes. So then, if you are uh, already alert, then you can be prepared, and as soon as such a distraction arises, you are already, you know, on the <laughs> put on the lookout. So you are. Uh, defending yourself and focusing on, uh, on, on the holy name. Yes? In the, what the, sometimes we are having decision, we know that everything is wrong, but yes. still you want to try it. What, why happened this? Well, because here, at this point, decision, it, it means that there is a big uh, momentum, a big mass of vasanas, uh, imagination, urge, and even bodily, you know, the, the body starts you know, producing, uh, you know, the juices and all kinds of uh, things to push you. So they all pu are pushing you. So at the, to stop at this point, it's very difficult. So that's why it's mu much more intelligent not to lead to that point and stop here. It's much more intelligent not to think that, oh, you know, I'm a devotee, I'm trained, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I really know things. So better not, don't, don't bring it to here, but stop, cut it off as early as possible. That's the most intelligent. Because there is a lot of, a lot of mass pushing already at that, at that point. Mm -hmm. you have uh, yeah, I was just remembering that part even though he was standing in a room that there was nothing, like no windows. Yes, yes. Yeah. And if you were in Gokula, no, it's from last year it was uh, this uh, Gufa, it's quite, but you can see in, in Vrindavan, the Gosamis, they had a cave. In Gokula, Sanan Gosami had a 20 meter uh, under the ground, a black hole. You go down there, you hear nothing, you see nothing, you can you totally just do the whole name. And that, he did this 500 years ago. Yeah. Nowadays, you go anywhere, you know, in, in this beautiful, peaceful place, still you can hear <laughs> the cars are, are going, you know, not to say about, uh, about uh, you know, some other places. I just uh, quickly, I remember uh, I was just for a few weeks in Rishikesh uh -huh. and I visited the, the incredible ashram of the Beatles. Yeah? Yeah. 
they they constructed an ashram and now it's abandoned and but they had uh, made like like eggs like for meditation for om for one person who has with bathroom and little kitchen and it was specially to meditate it's closed like this and it's with a little window and it's like and also catacombs like for meditating with little cells no? for a 84 of these eggs they made 84 yeah it's like very intense yeah. so uh, what we can do we can uh, you know just find a peaceful corner and that's why also early morning is so good because in early morning, uh, usually uh, that's the time for meditation. Yes, they, you, they will not disturb. And the atmosphere is the ideal. Is the ideal. And besides, the temple, even though occasionally some, it may happen that someone chants loudly or may distract you, but still there is some synergy. You know, several people trying to meditate, it helps to create a certain uh, momentum. It draws, it may help to draw you in. If, all the, if at least you know, a few people are trying to concentrate, it, it's helpful for your concentration. Okay, uh, last point. Have you had to, something that you want to say? Yes? Yeah. All right. So uh, let's um, meditate, or at least try our harana, or at least smarana, to approach this beautiful lake of Radakund to. Uh, Attain the blessing of having our eternal relationship with Krishna revealed in the heart and developing the spontaneous uh, attraction in our eternal relationship with Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna,